Hi guys, Squall here, and welcome to another Derail Valley video. Now in this video, I thought we'd do a bit of a challenge. I thought we'd try to haul something very, very heavy and use the steam train to do it, and also attempt to haul it out of a place that is quite hilly. So what we've decided to do is take a job from the coal mill up to the steel mill. Sorry, the coal mine up to the steel mill. The coal mine, actually, if you look at it on a map, is located in the top right of the corner. You can just see it up here with my little blue squiggly thing. And this track, as it as it leaves the coal mine, it climbs very, very steeply. And actually, the gradient increases as it goes along. And then just before uh, it makes a left turn there, it starts to level out. Now, en route to the steel mill, uh, we will have to negotiate quite a hilly descent, which brings its own problems, uh, which is obviously down to braking and not derailing. Because uh, if you follow this line out of here on the map, as you make that left turn there and you go to the north side of the oil well, you can see that it spirals down through a tunnel. Uh, and then we've got to head down to the middle of the map, which is where the steel mill is located. So we've got a couple of challenges on our hands, not least of which because this particular cargo, if I can select it, is 800 tons. The train mass is 800 tons, which is... You know, I've seen people say they've really, really struggled to get this out of here. They, they've not been able to do it. They've tried three times. There are some tricks that you need to employ uh, in the steam train in order to make it um, hold this kind of mass. There are, you know, one of them is just down to momentum. Uh, in other words, getting a bit of a run up onto this hill, making sure you've got adequate speed. Uh, and then the next thing basically involves getting the maximum power out of the engine, uh, which involves opening the vent underneath which blows air into the fire which causes the temperature it goes up and it produces more power but it also means you're going to be shoveling coal like a madman <laughs> so you know as we get up there it gets pretty busy once we reach the top oh and we'll probably need to deploy sand as well because there won't be enough traction um uh, friction on the on the rails to to keep this thing going it's tricky it, it is tricky there's no doubt about that once we make it to the top things calm down we close the vent, and then we make our descent down. And making your descent down is all about negotiating speed. It's about keeping the the momentum um, to, to a point where the train doesn't derail. I mean, the game does call itself Derail Valley for a reason. You know, this thing will, will derail if you let it to. Uh, first thing we need to do is we need to ratify the job. Um, but if I do that, it'll start the clock. So what I'm going to do is get the train all fired up and warmed up. And then let's just check all the points. We shall uh, make sure the points are set so we can... Uh, it's going to go in there. That's fine. Reverse. We're going to come forward here. And then we're going to reverse back that way. So that's going to go left. That looks fine. Uh, yeah, I think it, it looks set correctly. Left, left, and then right. That's fine. So let's jump into the actual loco. And we'll start the fire up. Uh, get our shovel going. And we'll start loading up the old coal here. Now I've heard I've not I've still not tried this game in VR, but I have heard that in VR, this is actually quite tricky, uh, which does surprise me because I would have. I mean, it is a bit finicky in with the mouse. You can see if you don't click on the right place, and trust me, when you're furiously trying to you know throw coal into this thing and and look out the window and see where you're going and you know <laughs> everything else, it gets a little bit messy. So let's uh, let's close. Oh no, let's open that because we're going to need to get our lighter out. Uh, we'll get the lighter out and we'll chuck that in there. Now it would have helped if I'd have actually lit the lighter before I did that. <laughs> that would indeed help. There we go. So we'll close that, and what we'll do is we'll open this thing here. This is the blower, and the blower is useful. Can we hear it? Anyway, the blower is useful when we're stationary because it helps blow air over the fire, which builds up the temperature a little bit quicker, uh, which is nice. Normally, when it gets to about 400 or so, that's when you'll be able to um, get something out of that, which means you've got some steam pressure going. Steam pressure's here. Of course, we'll need to open the uh, water valve. It's a fire out valve. That's not the right one. The injector. That's the injector. Now, a little trick for you. Um couple of things from my previous steam video this is so awkward there we go 
what we'll do is we'll fill that up. A couple of things, right? So, <clears throat> as some of you pointed out, the engine actually, or rather the boiler actually has a uh, release valve on it. So you don't actually need, you don't need to mess around with the steam dump valve here. Can you hear the blower? See? It gives you like an audible clue that it's actually blowing. You see the temperature coming back down now? Um, one trick you can employ, so you don't need to worry about that. We'll leave that closed. If it reaches maximum, if it, if it gets to too high a pressure, it'll just vent itself anyway. Uh, but what you can do is you can leave the water valve, this thing, you can just leave it open a little bit. And it will basically trickle water into the boiler, which means you don't have another thing you have to keep worrying about. Another thing that you have to, you know, shoveling coal, you're looking out the window, you're trying to negotiate things. You don't have to keep looking around over here and just adding water and all the rest of it. It's one less thing that you can just uh, effectively automate. Now, we've got enough steam pressure, so we can basically uh, put the reverser, if you like, into forward. Now, remember about this reverser. Top and bottom are more power, and the middle is more speed. If you actually refer to the manual, which is this thing here, uh, where it shows you on the manual thing. There you go. At the bottom of the page there, so the uh, the cutoff, as it's called, if you've got it in forward position, it means maximum power. Middle position means maximum speed. Now, that's important because as we climb out of here, we're, we're going to want to pick up some speed on this bit. Um, so we're going to want it in the middle position, but as we start to climb, as the gradient increases, we're going to have to increase the power, which is going to increase the torque to the wheels, which will also introduce slippage on the wheels, at which point we need to throw the sand down. Now, I told you about the vent. This is the lever here. As we do start making a climb, we will need to open the vent to get more power. At that point, the fire will burn quicker and hotter, and we'll be shoveling coal all day. Which reminds me, while we're at it, let's quickly, uh... Yep, that's the bell to remind me that we need to put more coal in. Now, one last thing we need to do is move the train over. And then we can go and ratify the job, and we can get going. So, release the brake. Apply some of the regulator. Don't forget the speed gauge is down here, so you want to watch that. <laughs> the speed gauge is, is pretty critical in this particular run. Um, because obviously if we go too quickly, like above about 20 or 30 or so, uh, going downhill, and we'll derail the whole lot. I think 20 is a safe speed on the descent. It's quite a long descent, but if you get a little bit impatient and pick up too much speed, it's just game over. Do it. Let's get past there. Apply the brake. Switch to the remote. Flick that over so it's going back the other way. Jump back in. Stick it in reverse. Release the brake. And open the regulator. Now, we'll have a look out this side. Assuming we've got all our points set correctly, we should find ourselves hooking up. It's a left turn, and then we should be on for a right turn. But just before we hook up, I'm going to stop the train, and we'll go and get the job picked up, and then we can reverse into it. What we'll do, we'll check on the water in a second just to make sure that it's uh, slowed down a bit here. It's a little bit quick. Yeah, that'll do. You see it getting a little bit bouncy then. Okay, that'll do that. Alright, so you notice the water's fully topped up, which means the water's doing its thing. Uh, there's maximum pressure in the boiler, but you see how it vents? 
So we don't need to worry about that. It's got an automatic dump system, but that'll do for now. Let's just quickly run down to the station here. I might get stamped. Take the job on and then the clock will start ticking. Okay, this is a job we want. Uh, validate. Uh, we don't need to worry about that thing. It's just uh, the time. 40 odd minutes is what it reckons it should be. Uh, but what we will do is I'm pretty certain this is the job uh, that I've just lined up on, but we'll We'll double check. Okay, I'm lost. Where am I? There we go. Over the top of the hill. <laughs> it's easy to lose where you are in this thing. Let's go to the other side if we can. Uh, so these are CBK009, CBK000, and if we look at this, 009 to 000, so that's fine. It's the right amount of cars with the right serial numbers. Release the brake. Just gently looking for about 5k, something like that. No more than 10. Enough to connect. But not too much to cause damage. Okay. Stick the brake on. Okay, right, let's concentrate. We're going to open it up. Try and get some momentum going. So we're going to put the... Open the regulator. Without causing wheel slips, got to be careful. And then we're going to bring the... Cut off back. Open the reg a bit more, cut off back a bit more. There we go. So we're starting to build up a little bit of speed. Just be careful through this point switch that we don't derail. Now if you want to coast, just knock off on the old regulator there. So you don't want to go too fast because they're still going through that junction. But it's important to just keep the momentum going. It's a bit more regulator. Alright, looks like we're clear. All right, let's try and open her up a bit. Now we're watching for wheel slip. You gotta listen for the grindy sound. And all the while we've gotta manage this. This is where it gets very, very hectic. Especially when this thing doesn't want to click properly. Let's close the door on that. It's a little bit faff. Okay, I'm going to go for maximum top speed now. As we start to pick up momentum. We're doing 40 Ks. Now, at some point, we're going to have to start bringing that into the forward position. We're going to have to open this vent. Right now, let's just try and keep the momentum going. That is going to start to climb down shortly because this gradient increases here. You can see it there as we turn right over this bridge. But we're holding 40 right now, so we're all good. Check everything's good at the back. Looks like, looks like we're coping. Now the speed's coming down. We're going to open that vent, which is like a, a turbo button on this thing. And you can hear the engine starting to struggle, so we'll get more torque out of it. And while we've got a little bit of downtime, we're going to very quickly start shoveling some more coal, because this thing will be swallowing coal right now. I'm going to go for maximum torque. Come on, click in that. Got that border pressure is good. Started to struggle. We've got maximum power, maximum torque. This is all she's got, so if she can't do it, she can't do it. Listen out for wheel slip. I don't hear any, but we'll drop a bit of sand down. 
just to make sure we've got the friction. Speed's coming down. We're on maximum power. There's nothing else we can do. I'm not hearing wheel slip, but we've got... We know the engine's going to struggle here. We're pretty much at its limit, and that's fine. The important thing is just keep this thing fed. Keep momentum. But you can see, without opening this vent here, this would not make it. Like, you would not have enough power. But as it stands, with the momentum we got, and with the extra boost, we're just about able to get it over this hill. But it is so touch and go, and this is why people really struggle with it. You see the f how quickly the coal's going down? It's unbelievable. It just swallows coal. Like, you need two people in this, in this cab, really. You need one person just shoveling coal, and the other person governing the engine and looking out. Now the speed's picking up, as you can see, which is great. It means we've got through the worst part of the gradient. So I'm just going to back off slightly. Not that much. I just want to keep that speed under control. Don't want speed to... Um... You, want, you want to be in control of the speed. You don't want the speed to be in control of you, as in you don't want to be losing out on momentum. And you don't want too much momentum to pick up because both are really bad. One will just stop you dead and you can't hill start very easily and the other one will lead you derailing. So it's just about controlling the speed. If you ever get a free few seconds, use it. Now the wheel slip though, you can hear that as we took that bend. You could hear all that wheel slip coming in, and that caused us to lose quite a bit of speed. So I threw the sand out, and we got it back under control. Now this is where we're going to have to um, negotiate the turn. It levels out, the speed will pick up very quickly. We want to close the vent and back off on the regulator, because we're about to start going downhill. But don't, just remember that when you're here, all that cargo behind you is still on the gradient. Okay, that'll do. Okay. Close that now. Could probably close this. Turn the sand off, back off on the reg. And now we're into controlling the speed the other way, which is the descent. So we're at 40. We're just going to cruise for a second. Water's good. It's no time for checking coal, unfortunately. But we don't need much coal down here. I'm going to apply the brake now because we're picking up too much speed. Just be careful that you don't arrest too much of the momentum going down here. You just want to keep it under control. And there's no points to worry about at this at this particular point. Let's back off on the brake. Because we're losing too much speed. More we've got a spare second. Guess what we're gonna do? We're gonna shovel a bit of coal in there. We don't have to watch what we're doing for a second. I can hear the speed picking up, so I'm going to back off. Hit the brake, get it under control. I'm looking for, like, no more than 30. Absolutely no more than 30. There you go. So the brake is constantly on there. In fact, you're probably looking at 20 to be safe down here. So let's just back off the speed a bit more. There we go. Now we've just got to find the right brake setting to, make, to keep the speed consistent. And we'll just have a quick look at the map while we're here. So you can see where we are. We've got a point change coming up, potentially, as we start turning right. Now, if you have a look out the side of the train, just have a look how the carriages are behaving. If you see them starting to kind of violently move around, there's a good clue that you're going too quickly but I think under 30 I think is manageable ok now we're going to have to set the points to a right turn if they're not set already so that's another thing we have to watch out for the good thing is at this point we are not burning coal very much so we don't have to keep spamming coal we're just picking up speed a bit either see, you've got to keep your eye on that 
It kind of reminds me of, um, I know trains have got very little to do with planes, but it reminds me of when you fly, airspeed is everything. It reminds me of the same, uh, that's set incorrectly, see it? Okay, that's a right signal set, right point set, I should say. Yeah, and, you know, particularly when you're flying and you're coming in on the approach and stuff, your airspeed is critical. You've got to keep your, your airspeed under control. And it's no different here. You've got to keep that ground speed under control. Okay, we're, we're at 30 and the trend is upwards, so I'll just put a bit more brake on the... I see it trending upwards there. It's trending back down now. Okay, that's good. Now, I know in a future update, they're going to be putting speed limit signs up on the track. And I think I, I really welcome that because right now, a lot of this is, is guesswork in a way. You know, you have to just look out the window almost and decide what kind of speed you think you can get away with. And it's very, very hard, very hard to discern gradient. You can't feel it. You have very little visual feedback on whether you're going up or down. Okay, let's just watch the speed because it's descending. It's trending downwards now, so we'll back up on the brake. So this bit must be flattening out. So we'll just kill the brake a second. So we've got no brake now. I just want to get a feel for whether we're going down or not. Looks like we are because it's trending upwards. So I'll touch the brake back in. Keep it under control. Don't want it to go more than 30. Quick look at the map. And you can see where we are. Now this is a long spiral, clockwise spiral descent down to the uh, junction. It goes through a couple of tunnels. But we're not concerned with that right now. We're just concerned with the speed. Okay, that's going upwards again. Let's get it back under control. Okay, the gradient's picking up. I was about to put some more coal in. But it's just reminded me anyway. So we are still burning coal, of course. Like, you know, the fire doesn't stop. It's not like, you know, a diesel or something where combustion just backs off and you stop using fuel. With, the, with this setup, the fire just keeps on raging. Okay, so this is my preferred, although this gives us a better view of the track, my preference is always to stay where the speed is, see how the water takes care of itself, and we don't need to worry about the pressure, the temperature's good. Uh, if the temperature comes down, you can just drop that and it'll, it'll give you a boost, which we just saw, but my preference is always to be on this side of the, of the engine, just so that we can keep our eye on that, because that is critical. And so far, everything's going well. So far, famous last words. Touch more brake, I think the gradient's going. Quick look at the map. Um, you'll see the crossover point if you look down here. The, the track effectively kind of loops through this mountain and comes back around. In fact, there you go. Comes kind of back around on itself. kind of cool and also branches off that way touch more brake now you can probably do 40 on this like this bit here is quite a straight section so strictly speaking we could allow the train to pick up speed but I am always super cautious because you know I've done this and I've had it you know you just get to a bend and boof it's all over and once it derails it is all over I know we've got a time limit, but frankly, safety, I think, is more important. And as long as we've got a decent pace, you know, as long as we don't stop or anything. Okay, backing off on the brake, backing off on the brake. Okay, we've got no brake now. 
at all. So we're kind of at a flat spot. Yeah, there's the tracks here. So back on the brake again. Do you know what? If you were to do this in real life, imagine what it's like when you go into a tunnel. And you've got all the combustion, all the smoke, the soot, and it's just coming out that stack in front of you. And then it's just, you're driving straight through it, basically. I imagine that gets quite nasty. <laughs> I'd still love to do it, though. I Honestly, I would still love to have a go in, like, a heritage steam train. I think it'd be so much fun. I know it takes a long time to train for one of them. And if you want to be a driver of one of those things, they have a massive waiting list. Like, you pretty much have to wait for somebody to retire or pass away before you can even get in the driver's seat. And you've got to work your way up through all the other menial jobs, you know. It can take, like, ten years just to become the driver. But you can also pay just to have, like, a go at, like, somebody take you out on one. Speed's picking up, brakes. So I'm just, you can't see it, but I'm just looking at that speed needle and, you know, just increasing or decreasing the brake just to keep that speed at around about 30. Just micro adjustments, really. And whilst it seems to be quite steady there, now will be a good time to quickly keep the coal going. Once we exit the uh, the descent, listen to the engine as well. You can hear what's going on. Like I could hear the speed decreasing. Take take the audible clues. Once we um, once we get through this descent here, we won't be coming that way. By the way, it's a different track. Um, forgot what I was going to say. Oh yes. Once we get through all the descent, uh, the actual rest of the route from the roughly the junction that we're going to hit all the way towards the steel mill can be flat, but if I remember... Hang on, hang on, hang on, speed. If I remember, there's a bit of a climb up to the steel mill. Steel mill. Uh, and that's where you can get caught out the most, is like a, de a decline is not so bad. It just means I need to stick some brakes on. But an incline... If you didn't build the momentum up before the incline, that can be a real issue. And I guess that's a bit of map knowledge. Uh, I hope they put some signs out at some point to show you that, you know, an incline's coming. And, it, you know, even if it said what the gradient was, even that would be helpful. But yeah, from, from a driver's perspective... It should be a relatively boring journey, <laughs> which sounds ridiculous, but like right now, everything is calm and under control, and that's kind of how we want it, really. Again, a bit of spare time, just do the things that need to be done, because you never know when there's going to be a bit of panic. Okay, backing off on the brake. Let's have a look at the map. So we're about halfway around the circuit. Uh, there's no brakes on, and the speed seems to be stable and not trending either way. We're going to bring the cutoff back. To speed because I'm just going to bring a little bit of regulator. We're actually losing speed, so I'm just going to bring a little bit of power in. I kind of feel like we're flattening out here. Okay, back off on the regulator. So we're going again. nice and sunny. I look forward to when they bring weather into this. Might just allow the speed to build up a little bit here because it's quite, it's relatively straight. So we'll just cruise down through here. Check the map. 
map showing that we're going to come up to some points pretty soon, so... Although we don't need to switch the points in any way, we don't want to go smashing through them either. So we'll just keep it... About maybe 35 or so. I do like the challenge of this game, I must admit. I do like the fact that... You've got all this kind of management to do. It can be a handful. And there is a bit of a learning curve to it, but I like that. Alright, here's the points. Which we don't need to worry about. It's only if you come in the other way. Okay, just bring the speed down a little bit, because this there's a turn here, it looks like a turning descent, so I'm just going to apply some more brake. Looks like quite a sharp turning descent. Yeah, that you see, that would easily catch you out if you're not worried of it. Like, if I wasn't looking out the window paying attention though. Let's just bring the speed down because I could hear the uh, carriages starting to bash. I don't know if you heard that thunking sound, but when you hear that thunking sound, it means you're very close to derailing. Just gonna keep it around about 20. Take it nice and steady through here. Bit of power. Make sure the brakes are off. Suddenly got very busy with that incline that I couldn't see. Let's get the coal in. Pull run out of coal. So yeah, that that pretty much caught me out, which is what can happen. We've still got good pressure, but that pretty much caught me out though, because it went from a very sharp descent and then it flattened out and immediately sort of picked up into a climb, which is weird because it's a spiral decline. So that was very odd, but we didn't completely lose momentum, which is the important thing. I'm just gonna back off on the regulator. back to a cruise picking up speed again yeah talk about tricky like that initial bend that started that we could have easily derailed it turned very sharply and descended very quickly and it could have derailed us and I think 20 was probably a safe speed through there so a quick look at the map, you can see we're coming up some points that we're going to have to left turn at. So we want to go through the points, like definitely under 30. 20 is your save speed. Uh, let's see if we've got speed under control. We're not too close to the points. Now's a good time to quickly take the opportunity just in case there's a climb after it. Okay, back on the brakes. Speed's picking up. Now it's it get ready with the remote signal, because as soon as I think we come out of this tunnel, we're going to be pretty close to the points. Yep, there it is. You see how close that was? Like, seriously. Okay, speed under control. That can really catch you out. Not only just switching the points, but 
having too much momentum to go through them. Okay, brakes are off. A little bit of power's coming in. Just easing it through. Check the map. Map says we're going the right way. Back off on the regulator. Let's just cruise at 20 through there. Remember, the back of the train is going through the, the whole points at the moment, so... Going to keep that speed. Better brake. Just keep that speed down. It would be kind of nice if we could see, so sort of like just that marker, if we could actually see roughly where the, tr like if it drew the whole length of the train on the map, that would be kind of handy. But Now, we've got a, a right turn coming up at the oil well, which means possibly another point to change. Okay, the game's just throwing me up there for some reason. That's the weird oddities that it does. Don't like hearing those thunking sounds. Back off on the regulator. Quickly throw in some coal. Come on, game, don't frame lag on me like that. Okay, brakes. We're going too fast. Quick map check. Now that, to, to the naked eye, it kind of looks like it's going downhill slightly. But it also looks like a very sharp bend, so I'm going to bring the speed down. I can hear the, the carriage is jostling. Which is a bad sign. So we'll just bring it down to sort of 20-ish. I don't know if they fixed the bug in the flat cars. There was a bit of a, a bit of an issue with the flat cars being very unstable. I wonder if they fixed that. Okay, we've got a nice steady speed. Quick map check reveals we're not near the junction yet. Brakes are fully released. And brakes are going back on. Yep, we're still in a decline. I'm just going to keep the speed. This is working okay right now. The antenna mast up on top of that hill, though. Quick map check. Uh, we've got a left turn, then we're going to be looking for that junction. It's all looking fairly stable. Just releasing the brakes a little bit. I hope this is um I hope this is helping in some way this video. I'm sure there's an, a large majority of you have already mastered the whole thing and probably gonna be posting comments telling me that I can go quicker and etc. But I expect there's also quite a number of you who've really struggled with this and this may be helping explain just how to manage this situation because it is literally about managing the situation particularly that climb and then the descent here seems to be relatively calm right now which means it's a good time to do that quick check of the map 
Okay, signals coming up. Or the points are coming up, I should say. Okay, that's uh, that's already switched correctly. So yeah, less than 25 through the points is what I aim for. Now, I think, not these points, but the next ones, I think after that, you see when it crosses the river, and that I think that straight section after the river, if I remember, that's a straight climb, but we need to have momentum going at that point, I think. I've only been down there once, perhaps twice, but I've got a feeling that that's a climb. I kind of feel like we're leveling out here. I've turned the brakes off just to see if we're actually losing speed, and I think we are. So I think we're already leveling out. Yeah, I'm just going to bring a little bit of regulator in. Set for maximum torque, that's fine. Just looking for a steady speed, really. There's more and more of the carriages go from gradient to flat we have to compensate by adding more power because gravity is not helping us anymore it's not pushing us down anymore so we've got to start picking up the slack now so far so good But yeah, if there was some maximum speeds published, like particularly on the points and stuff, it would greatly help. Okay, we're looking for a right-hand switch, I think. Yeah, that's gonna that's set correctly for us. So let's worry about that one. And this is a relatively straight bit of track, and then it turns right over the river, and then sharp left for the climb, I think. So, yeah, we'll probably pick a bit of speed here. see how sharp the right is. The right turn looks like a long right and then a sharp left is what it looks like. So I think maybe like we can probably do 30 through here and then we'll have to slow down for the left turn. What I don't want to do is get cocky at this stage and start rushing it and then just derail the whole thing. Quick toot. <laughs> I wonder how many other uh, locos are going to add to this game. Because, like, the internals, are, like, obviously they're going to operate the same way, but all the levers and dials and everything are all going to be different in each model. Different places and stuff. And the whistle, of course, is going to sound different. Okay, so this is the right turn. Can't hear the carriages jostling, so I think we're okay from that point of view. Let's just watch out for this left turn. Now, let's have a quick look at the job. We need to haul it to the steel mill and uncouple it at I-10 going to be looking for. I-10 at the steel mill. We get that pre-selected. There's a steel mill. I-10 is on the right. Well, actually, if we're coming in from the northeast, it's the second left. Okay, we are coming up to 
sharp turn, but we don't know how sharp it really is. So we've got to decide what speed to go around it at. I'm going to back off and say we're going to go at it at like 30. I'm going to bring about a break in. I'm going to say 30 maximum. Just got to be careful about killing our speed when we're uh, not going downhill. Because getting your speed back is tricky. Okay, that's trending upwards. Okay, it's not quite as sharp as it looked on the map. But it's safe and sorry. So that left turn isn't even really on the map, is it? Look. I'm going to start accelerating now because I think we're going to have to climb. And that's just going off memory. In any event, it's quite a straight piece of track, isn't it? So. The cutter, roll the cutoff back to speed, remember? And we'll just allow it to pick up a bit. got it bro already got it there's something in beside my head is like a mental alarm clock that knows when to shovel from coal Let's flick to the map yeah, this feels a bit like a climb but it's a slow left and a slow right and then we're gonna have to start thinking about the steel mill entrance which, given that we looked at this, so we're coming in from the bottom of the map there, because that's a northeast entrance. So we don't want the first left, we want the second left immediate right for I-10. Let's back off on that. Just don't fancy getting too much over 60. I hate it when it does that scenery loading jump like that. Back off on the speed a little bit. Bring it down to 40 because this curb is a little bit sharp. Bring the power back in and hold it at 40 though. Yeah, that, that looks very too like an incline, isn't it? It's like a climb up to the steel mill, I think. So we'll just keep that momentum. listening to what the wheels are doing. Okay, it's struggling. Hit the brakes. You, you could hear it jangling around. You don't want that. <laughs> the 50 was too much. 40 seems to be comfortable. Junction or the points junction. Right. Get the gas on, keep it under control. Nothing to switch on the point side of it yet. Okay, this appears to be some kind of climb coming in. Let's get the torque back on. Yeah, look, we just got caught out by the gradient that we couldn't see. 
It made a very sharp left turn and then immediately climbed. And that's killed momentum. It's important to just detect it happening and get it under control quickly. Maximum torque. Get the power in, get the sand down, get it back under control. And the points are coming up. I'm just going to let it cruise now. I'm going to quickly have a look at the junctions. So we've got to ignore the first one. Go onto that station map. Then take the next left. So back off on that. Let's just cruise in now. So it's not this one. It is that one, I think. So we go right here. We go left there. And then we go immediately right. So that should be set for I-10, I believe. I'm just going to hit the brakes. Because I don't want to go in through these points too quickly. Final bit of coal. Oh. Frames sometimes. So we're looking for the sign that says I-10. I-10, there we go. So we're on the I-10. It's just a matter now of where we stop. A lot of steel here. Look at this. So pay attention to when the back of the train stops going through that. Might give us a clue, but... There you go, that's the last carriage there. So that's now just entering I-10. So we can probably stop down here. And then go and get paid. Jobs are good, right? Okay, back off on the regulator. And we'll hit the brakes there. Not maximum brakes, just enough to start to bring it to a stop. All the cut off back. Maximum brake. There's the uh, pressure valve, steam dump, there you go. That is why when you see steam trains pulling at the station, you always see that. Is they're basically steam dumping. That looks like the station. Where's the entrance? Okay. Check validator. Okay. 43 minutes bonus time. We did it in 89 minutes. Which is a complete and utter lie. How could we possibly have done it in 89 minutes? The video is only 60 minutes so far. <laughs> so that's a lie. <laughs> but still, we got paid some money. Why are you still peeping? Oh, I see. I'm going to actually take my cash. I suppose that's fair. Drop the wad. And take... Look at that. 47 grand. Get in. So let's see. Base, 25k. Bonus time, nothing. No damage to anything at all. Uh, so, yeah, we didn't get any bonuses, but we got paid, I mean, 25 grand to do that. I'd, I'd do that for 25 grand, wouldn't you? <laughs> and there we go. That is how you haul 800 tons uh, up an incline and manage it going through a decline and through points and stuff. I hope the video has helped you in some way, or at least been interesting. Um, but, yeah, really fun, challenging game. I, I really enjoyed that. Hope you did too. Give me a thumbs up if you did, uh, sub if you're not subbed. Until the next one, take care, guys. Happy training.